Hi there. I want to introduce to you the whole concept of peer evaluation. In this course, we'll be using the critic system to give you feedback and help you learn as you assess other students' work as well as have your own work assessed regularly by your peers. Here's a short video from Critic explaining their system. Welcome to Critic, where you can develop students' higher order thinking. It's a fun and interactive peer to peer learning platform that empowers you to assess students' critical thinking skills. We do so through three stages, create, evaluate, and feedback. We ensure grading accuracy through our proprietary calibration algorithm and flagging system. There's no doubt that the students are more engaged this year. They are getting more frequent testing. They like that, and I like it. Critic allows us to fully emerge into the topic. For the rubrics, I use some of the preset rubrics, or I modify them to some extent, and then customize them to each of the cases that we're using. So it does allow for much more accurate assessment of one another, of themselves. Peers that put in hard work and know what they're talking about, their scores are weighted more highly than peers who don't put in hard work or who don't know very much about what they're talking about. It's super friendly interface for students to use. It's easy to navigate. I wouldn't really have had the time every week to provide them with you know, really constructive feedback and that they have a chance then to read each other's work, learn from each other, and also learn how to give constructive and motivating feedback. I would say that this technology is very easy to use and you can just match it up with whatever programs you're already running. If you have submissions, you want students to look at it, then this way they can assess one another. Develop students' higher order thinking today at critic.io. There's a small cost associated with using Critic, but I believe the value in this approach to your assessment is absolutely terrific. You will receive feedback that has been shown to be consistent with that of an instructor or a teaching assistant directly marking your work. You will be getting this detailed feedback on everything you submit, which simply wouldn't be possible with the limited time and resources available to your instructors or your TAs. The small cost of software is more than reasonable in that if we were to hire the number of TAs to give you a similar quality of assessment for every single student submission, the rise in tuition would be far more than the cost of the critic software. To reassure you of the integrity of this marking methodology, we will be doing spot checks at random to ensure that everything is working and to check for consistency of what the students are receiving as marks as compared to what we would normally expect if we marked each and every individual assignment. In terms of the learning experience, because you are needing to assess other students' work, you are actually learning better. Let's check out this YouTube video. Most educators are familiar with Bloom's Taxonomy, a model that classifies different levels of human cognition in thinking, learning, and understanding. As a teacher, you've likely used this taxonomy to guide the development of curriculum, assessments, and instructional strategies. But how is this model affected in an age of digital technology, and how might it influence your instructional design? Let's take a step back. Bloom's Taxonomy was created in the 1950s by educational psychologist Benjamin Bloom and his colleagues. The three lower levels, knowledge, comprehension, and application, are more basic levels of cognition, also called lower order thinking skills. This would include concrete thinking, memorization, and understanding. The three upper levels, analysis, synthesis, and evaluation, referred to as higher order thinking skills, include abstract, critical, metacognitive, and creative thinking. Some have likened the model to a mountain or a stairway, where teachers set learning objectives and design learning experiences to guide students to higher levels of thinking. The taxonomy has become an important model for structuring students' learning processes. In the 1990s, Bloom's taxonomy was updated by a group led by David Crathwall, one of the original authors, and Lauren Anderson, a former student of Bloom's. To make the model relevant to 21st century learning, one of their main changes was updating the nouns associated with each level to action-oriented verbs. This differentiation positions thinking as an action-based process rather than one of passive acquisition. For example, knowledge was replaced with remember, analysis was changed to analyze, and so on. 
they also reordered the last two steps. Evaluation, which was previously at the top, was moved down, and creating, formerly synthesis, was moved to the top. So, thinking about this video, it makes perfect sense why Critic gives you a deeper learning experience. You are evaluating as well as having to communicate thoughtfully your evaluation. Effectively, you are learning by teaching. In order to assess, you need a deeper understanding of the topic. Normally, when you submit something and are evaluated simply by the instructor and the TA, you are not hitting the higher levels of the Bloom's taxonomy. I hope this quick explanation, which is backed up by scholarly research, will help you buy into this unique way of learning. The software is pretty self-explanatory, and there will be written instructions on how to submit your work, how to assess your peers, and how you can assess the assessors. This video is simply to help you understand why we are using Critic and why we believe this is the best and most cost-effective learning experience for you as a student.